Hello and welcome everyone to tonight's Artist Loft drawing class. I'm your instructor, Adrian Hodge, and I am thrilled to be partnered with Michaels to bring you this ongoing drawing series with free and premium classes. Tonight's class is a two-part class on mapping and contouring faces. And uh, so it will continue the same time next Wednesday evening at uh, 6 p.m. Central Time. And so, yeah, um, before I switch to my tabletop view, I just wanted to mention the premium class that we have coming up later this month. It is on monochromatic soft pastel. So, um, so we'll be doing this monochromatic soft pastel fruit study. And I provided uh, some very wonderful images of uh, this pear that I've, um, you know, inverted the light and reduced the light and then made it uh, black and white so that you can uh, really study the, the colors and the value that are happening with that, uh, that piece of fruit. And then I'll show you how to center um, your, make a little frame on this black max, excuse me, black mixed media paper. And then we'll do the, the soft pastel drawing on there. And we should have a nice frameable product by the end of that class. So make sure you sign up for that one. It is a premium class. So that means that the class recording will not be um, posted on YouTube publicly. It will only be shared with students who register for the class. But this class will be posted on YouTube and on the Michaels website under fine art classes. Uh, sometime tomorrow and the next day you can find the class listed. So if I go kind of fast, because um, this class was listed for ad advanced students um, tonight, which I, if you don't consider yourself in that category, please don't, you know, go away because uh, you can still, you know, follow along and hopefully uh, learn something and you might surprise yourself um, how far you can get, uh, even though I'm not going to be spending a whole lot of time building or scaffolding the skills here. I'm going to kind of just do a quick review of basic facial proportions and then we'll dive right in mapping and contouring uh, a face using this photograph of uh, my son who is almost six but when the photo was taken he was about five and a half so um, we'll be working with child facial proportions tonight. Um, and the review that I'm going to do is going to be actually for um, adult facial proportions, but I'll, I'll speak about what changes when it comes to child's proportions uh, or children's proportions as we get into this uh, drawing. Um, I feel like I had one more thing to add and I maybe lost my point there. Um, oh, if you if I go too fast, you can refer back to the YouTube recording tomorrow. So just, you know, stick with us and then you can always, you know, go back and, and watch it later and slow down and pause or rewind if, um, you know, there, there's a certain part that you need repeated. Also after class, I will be doing a live uh, Q&A on uh, Instagram. So if you want to join me there, I'll share my Instagram handle with you now. It is at Adrian Hodge Art. And uh, if you want to tag me with any work that you do uh, from the class tonight or next week on Instagram at Adrian Hodge Art, you can do that and make sure to tag your work with those hashtags, make it with Michael's and Michael's classes. And here's a little bit of preview of my personal work that I do using mainly calligraphy ink on paper. If you want to check me out on online, um, I think Chanel probably dropped my link tree in the chat or she can um, if she didn't already. Uh, so very easy supply list tonight. We're using just the uh, Artist Loft sketching pencils and uh, a synthetic eraser. You're gonna want either drawing paper or uh, Artist Loft sketch pad or drawing pad. And then I provided these photographs in the supply list. And if you're watching, Later on uh, YouTube, the photograph should be linked in the supply list as well. Um, so yeah, just the photograph, one photograph. And, um, but then I did print out my 
preliminary sketch. So this should be hopefully where we will land by the end of the class. And uh, I'm just going to hold it up a little closer to the screen so you can see all those elevational contour lines and how I've got sort of mapped out the features. I'll try to draw a lot darker tonight on the paper and use a heavier pencil so that those lines, you know, will show up a little more clear. But uh, this was just the photograph that I snapped. That's what's underneath this drawing here. So um, I just snapped that photo in the process and then um, printed that out so that I could refer back to it tonight. Um, any questions about supplies or anything before we get going here, before I review basic facial proportions briefly? I'm going to let Chanel weed through the comments and see if there's any questions jumping out. Um, Marcia asked what pencil, which I'm going to grab the link for the specific pencil that you'll be using today, but that is the only question. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're uh, going to be using a variety of pencils. Um, and yeah, that's the question that gets asked the most I've noticed in all of these drawing classes. And I just have to repeat that the pencil that I'm using on screen might not be the best pencil for you to be using as far as the um, H and B pencils. I'm always going to use a heavier pencil just because I've learned with Zoom, I need to use a heavier pencil so that my lines will show up on the page. But especially for tonight, while we're in this preliminary phase, you should be using um, an H pencil, like a 2H or a 4H, and I'll repeat that once we get going. But um, you wanna draw nice and light so that if you make any marks that you don't intend to be there, they're easy to erase and um, the first class that we did in this series, the intro to graphite and drawing forms class is a great one to refer back to if you're unsure about the, um, the graphite pencils and the, the numbers and letters on the side of them. But again, I'm not gonna repeat all that because the class was marketed as an advanced class, but um, you're welcome to check out those other classes on um, intro is called Intro to Graphite and Drawing Forms. That's probably the class I refer back to the most, um, that very first one in this series. Okay, um, so I'm going to actually reuse a few of my previous classes from other premium classes on uh, facial proportions um, because when I taught basic facial proportions in this series, it was part of the, the premium class content. Um, so Unfortunately, we can't, you know, attach that YouTube link, but um, I'm just going to review very quickly basic facial proportions. So I might go a little fast here. Um, all right. So the average person has an egg shaped head. That's how we um, we tend to draw a, a human head when we're just sketching a generic head. Obviously, people's heads can you know vary in their um, their overall form as you you know depending on the person but we draw an egg shaped head and then within that egg shape of the head uh, we divide it into thirds so we drew a rectangular box around our egg shape and then uh, divided first in half with a horizontal and a vertical axis that divides the crown of the head um, and the bottom of the chin with a horizontal line. And that line at the center of the head between the crown of the head and the bottom of the chin is where the eye line typically rests. And uh, I use words like typically, thereabouts, generally, because there is no perfectly proportioned head. The way that all of our heads, uh, our facial proportions differ from each other or what make us look like us is what make us unique. And there's no, you know, standard model for a human being that we refer back to and say, well, on the standard head, you know, um, unless we're talking about, you know, this kind of generic head here, you know, if you want to call this the standard, but just keep in mind that there is no human being that, um, you know, that perfectly is perfectly proportioned. We all have little imperfections, 
quote unquote imperfections and idiosyncrasies uh, to uh, and asymmetries to our faces that uh, make us unique and make us look like us. So um, always important to point that out. And also this center line at the center of the head is going to vary from person to person. So it might rest directly down the center of the eyes. It might be slightly above the eyes. Uh, it might be more of the eyebrow line, but um, typically the eyes are at the center of the head. And if that seems weird to think about, think about where you would balance a book um, on the top of your head. If I put a book on the top of my head, it's gonna rest on the crown of my head, right? And that's way up there. It's not here, it's not at the bottom of my hairline, it's up here at the top of my head. So eyes are halfway down between that and the chin. Or typically, and they're about halfway down. Okay, and then halfway between the eye line and the chin, we've got another horizontal line and that we divide um, between the eye line and the chin, we've got the nose line. And then about halfway down between the nose line and the chin, we've got another line, which is not the center of the mouth. It's more this little shadow cleft moment underneath the lips. So it's, uh, more around a third of the way down where we find the line at the center of the lips. So we've got the eye line, the nose line, the lip line, or the, the little space underneath the lips. I just realized I never wrote lip line there. Uh, okay, and then um, we've got the width of about five eyes in between our eyes, and this is for adults. So on an adult head, we've got about the width of uh, five eyes wide on their head. And I'm gonna use this photograph of myself to illustrate that. If I were to take a pencil and uh, measure just the width of my eye, I should have about the width of an eye in between the eyes and then on the side of the, um, the eye and the, the side of the head, my hair is kind of in the way right there, but there should be the, another width of an eye. So five eyes wide. There are other uh, nice little tricks that you can use to check yourself when you are drawing a human head to see if proportions are lined up because most people do fall within um, these general rules. And then when you, you know, encounter a certain a uh, person in a drawing, when you're drawing someone who deviates from these rules quite a bit, then that's when you know, you know, you've got a lot of character that you want to include to capture that person's likeness. But um, typically, the tear duct will be in line with the side of the nostrils. The center of the pupils will be in line with the uh, the side of the mouth. And that's not the side of the lips because lips tend to be like butter melting on a piece of toast. As I like to say, they just kind of melt into the skin of the face. So the lips may end somewhere like here, like the bottom lip and the top lip may kind of melt off right there. But I'm talking about the corner of the mouth where the mouth opens wide. That line should be in line with the, the tear duct. You should be able to draw a straight line down from the tear duct and hit the corner of the mouth. And if you don't, then your mouth is probably not wide enough. Um, so, or the, the drawing, the mouth in the drawing is probably not wide enough. Okay, so we've got all those accounted for. Then I want you to think about the elevation of the head. And we're gonna be talking about that a lot tonight as we map uh, the contours of my son's face here is we're going to be talking about how the head is a three-dimensional form, right? It's not flat. It's like an apple. Somebody explained that to me a long time ago, and I never forgot it, that the head, you know, think about an apple, it's round, and you've got all these features on the side of an apple or maybe an avocado because it's more avocado shaped, but still it's not flat. So, but all of the parts of the face that protrude out are where we've got our highest elevational points. And so that's the center of the forehead where everywhere I've put the circles, those are the highest elevational points. So we've got the forehead, the cheeks, the top of the cheeks where they protrude, 
the top of the nose protrudes, and then the chin protrudes forward. Um, and the lips protrude forward um, a little bit as well. So you'll usually have a highlight somewhere on the lips, but that's where the light is gonna hit the most. And everywhere else where we don't have that high elevation is where we tend to see the most shadows. So we're gonna see shadows underneath the forehead, right? Underneath the eyebrows. We're gonna see shadows along the side of the nose, underneath the nose, especially underneath the lips, on the side of the cheekbones where it's a little bit more sunken in. That's where all of our, our shadows are gonna fall. So uh, those are the basic facial proportions there, super basic. I didn't really talk about hairline. I've had, uh, there was a free class on drawing hair and there's been lots of premium classes where I've broken down all of the facial features. So we had a premium class on drawing eyes. We had a premium class on drawing noses, lips. Um, I did a class on head tilts um, because right now we're just talking about a head that's facing straight forward. So all of these lines are nice and flat, but we had an entire class on head tilts where we uh, talked about the, uh, the tilt of the head and how when it's tilted, we're gonna have this axis turned on its side. And now instead of looking at a straight line across the uh, front of the head, we're now looking at uh, curved lines. So curved lines for the nose, curved lines for the, uh, the eyes, the nose, lips, et cetera. Um, and the, the class on drawing hair, I just saw in the chat uh, that it popped up, somebody was asking about drawing hair. That class was free. So you should be able to find that one on YouTube. It was um, a colored pencil class uh, on drawing hair. Okay, so I'm gonna move on. I wish I had more time to go more in depth on facial proportions. If you have any lingering basic questions on facial proportions, you can join me on uh, Instagram after class at Adrian Hodge Art, and I'll be doing that 30 minute Q and A. And I'd love to, you know, repeat or uh, clarify anything that I just covered. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and move on to this particular photo here. So we're working from this particular photo tonight, and we're going to be just mapping and contouring this face. Um, and it is a little bit different than the proportions that I just described because we're talking about a child. So the kind of just blanket rule when you're drawing um, a child is that the eyes and the lips especially, and the nose too, but um, the eyes and lips especially take up way more space on the head. So we are very likely not gonna have the width of an, well, let's see, because I didn't measure it. Let me see before I say that. Do I have the width of an eye in between the eyes? Not quite. So I don't quite have the width of his eye in between the eyes um, and on the side of the head. And I actually, one thing I was going to point out when we get into this, and I refer back to this drawing, I could have probably made the eyes and lips bigger in this drawing. I, when I was done, I realized that I didn't follow my own rule of enlarging the eyes and lips um, enough there. And I thought, well, that'll be a good teachable moment that like, if you feel like you're drawing the eyes and the lips too big, you probably are not because the things that we tend to associate with, um, well, I'm getting off, off point a little bit when I say that it's just kind of a stock thing I always talk about when I'm talking about facial proportions is that we tend to equate youth with beauty in our culture. And so what we tend to deem as beautiful in a adult is youthful features, larger uh, lips and larger eyes. And that's because a child's eyes and lips are very oversized. Um, so so yeah, it's the, the, the big eyes and the big lips that is what makes it look more like a child in the drawing. And if you're drawing a child or a baby, especially, and the drawing is just looking older, then it's probably that. Um, so, but other than that, all of the, those other things are going to line up. We're still going to have the pupils lining up with the corner of the mouth, the tear duct lining up with the uh, side of the nostrils, et cetera. And that center line 
uh, at the center of the face. We're going to map all of that out as we start to sketch it now. So you can grab our sketch paper or our, our drawing paper. This will be your um, your final drawing, maybe, might not be. You might end up drawing it a couple of times. So maybe grab some scratch paper right off the bat. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and and make this my, my final drawing. We'll see if I can draw my lines light enough or if I can, Never mind. I'm kind of thinking out loud there. I'm going to draw darker though. I'm going to use a darker pencil. I want you to use a lighter pencil. So I'm going to use, let's see, a 4B or maybe just a B for now. Let me see how dark I can get my B pencil to be. And then uh, I want you to use like a 2H or a 4H. And I definitely want you to draw on the side of the pencil and to draw nice and light so that your lines are easy to erase so that if you do something that, you know, you want to erase that it's possible. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw that egg shape for the head. And we're going to work general to specific here. So we're going to start out with kind of a very generic head here, and then we're going to use mapping the face and contouring of the face and value shapes on the face to try to hone in in a more specific way. Okay, so I drew on the side of the pencil. I'm holding my pencil in a way where I can, I'm just going to it back to forward facing. I'm holding my pencil on the side like this as I sketch so that my lines are nice and light as I'm finding this, this general shape here. And I'm only going to draw a little darker so that you can see my lines. And actually, I'm going to make it a little smaller too. But I drew it nice and big because I want you to draw it nice and big. I want you to try to fill up your paper with this head. If you just took your piece of paper and just drew a tiny little egg shape, draw it, go to a new page and draw it again. I definitely want to make sure that everyone is drawing nice and big on their paper. And that is because uh, you're going to have a much easier time going general to specific, and you're also going to give yourself a lot more room for error, and you're going to make it a lot easier for you to map and add all these contours. You're going to have a hard time adding everything that I'm going to add to this space as far as the elevational lines if you're drawing it teeny tiny on your paper, and that is something that a lot of beginners tend to do. Um, so you want to draw it nice and big but I just had to draw it a little smaller so it'll fit on the frame without me having to move my webcam too far away. Okay, so I've got an egg shape, but my son's head is very round. He's got a much rounder shape going. So we actually want to widen things a little bit. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna just kind of draw a big circle here on top of my egg shape. And then I'm going to try to hone in on where the, the chin kind of comes a little more narrow and draw that more narrow shape for the chin and then see where adjustments need to be made as far as the overall shape of the head. And we want it nice and big and round because he's got that very cherubic thing going on. So I'm going to erase some of those lines from my original egg shape, and I should have something that's a little closer to his. I am going to have to go out a little further to keep it all on there. Okay, so we should have something like that for the initial head shape, and we're not worried about the hair just yet, but the hair is going to and I don't know how far we're going to even really get with the hair, especially tonight. We might just get 
yeah, let's not worry about the hair just yet. Let's make sure we get the everything else placed on the, the head in the right way before we get distracted by those curls. They're very distracting. Um, okay, so we've got this little narrow shape for the chin and all of this may need to be adjusted again. Um, how are my lines showing up on, on the screen? Can everybody see my lines? Are they dark enough or do I need to be making them darker than that? Give me a few like thumbs up emojis or something because sometimes it looks okay on my screen, but then later when I watch the playback, I'm like, oof, those lines are, are really light. Okay, cool. Thank you for the validation. All right, so uh, let's find the placement of all of these main features. First, we're gonna draw the line, the vertical axis from the top of the head to the chin. And um, I'm just gonna go ahead and draw on this photograph, even though it, gonna mean drawing on my sweet little baby boy's face. All right. So I'm gonna do that vertical line down the center there just to help me kind of visually measure where I am and where I need to be. Okay, his head is also slightly, it's at a third, three degree angle, right? It's kind of turned, a he's turned a little bit towards us. So we're seeing more of this side of his face than that side of his face. So this more distant eye is probably gonna give us a little bit of trouble. And that's why I'm really gonna focus more on this side of the face and in this initial sketch, especially tonight. But next week, I'll, um, if I don't get to it tonight, kind of troubleshooting the, um, the other side of the face then I will, but we're also gonna hide half of that behind one of those big curls. So might not be as troublesome as you think. You know, we're, we're really only gonna draw like three quarters of that eye since his, his head is turned at a three quarter angle there. So there is a slight curve to the axis. So it's not a perfectly straight line. So we wanna make sure that we've got a slight tilt happening on our vertical axis. And then likewise, on the eyes, we've got a slight tilt happening here too. So it's rounded, it's not a flat line. I'm gonna draw a line down the center of his eyes there, just so you can see how it slightly curves. And that big circle that we drew to help us find the shape of the head can actually give us a good, although I'm erasing that just so it doesn't confuse anyone where the halfway point is for the eyes, but the halfway point and it, his head is tilted a little bit down. So I can actually see the crown of his head. If I were to, let me see if this will show up. I can use a white pen to make it show up even more. I'm gonna draw the line for where the, this is probably around the, the crown of his head right here. I was like, got a little headset on, right? It might be a little further back than that, but just to give you a, an idea that the head is tilted down, we're sort of seeing the crown of the head a little bit there, not much, but. So we wanna tilt down on the eyes. And that is, I think about the halfway point, but this is why I want you drawing lightly because you maybe might not, you might need to adjust. You might need to move the eyes up or down right here. So be mindful of how you're pressing down on your pencil. I'm only pressing down this dark so you guys can see my lines. If I was drawing this by myself in my studio, these lines would not be showing up on the screen at all because um, actually, let me see if this, I just realized I never turned on my ring light tonight. Does that make it better or worse? Let's see. Um, okay, somebody tell me if it may, made it worse. I'm gonna leave it on. Okay, so that's about where the eye line is. We might need to adjust it, but we're gonna leave it there for now. Okay, and then we're gonna go about halfway down. I'm just visually measuring it where the halfway mark is. Halfway between that and the chin is where I wanna put 
the nose line and I don't need to draw it all the way across the, the face, but I do want to make sure that it's a curved line and it's curving down in the same direction um, as the, the eye line is curved down. And then same thing with the lip line. So the line at the center of the lips, we need to have a slight curved down here. And then we're not actually even seeing the shadow underneath his lips because his head is tilted down. So I'm only seeing, you know, like a tiny bit of that little cleft moment of a shadow over here on the side. Um, but my point is it's a curve down. So go ahead and put that at the halfway mark. And this is where that three quarter view is definitely gonna come in because we're not quite seeing as much of his lips on this side of his face as we are. We're seeing more detail on this side. So I'm really gonna concentrate the contours on just this side of the face because I left, I tried to leave this a little unfinished, just giving everyone the idea that, you know, we maybe are not going to have a fully completed portrait um, by the end of these two classes, but we're still going to have some nice value and some nice definition that we add in there. Okay, so we've accounted for where the eyes, the nose, and the lips are going to go. Now we're going to lightly start to sketch in the shapes of the uh, facial features. But actually, before we do that, let's, let's not commit to those just yet. Let's go ahead and uh, put those elevational points in. So those highest elevational points. And these are going to be erased later. You don't want them to be too dark. Um, so, you know, draw them nice and light, but I'm going to draw them a little darker so that you can see them. But we've got that circle for the forehead. We've got the circle for the cheek. And we're seeing way more of this cheek than we are of this cheek. So this circle is kind of right over here on the edge here. The highest point of the cheek is kind of where his, his hair is covering it up. And also, uh, it's just not visible. It cuts off like because his head is turned slightly. So we're not seeing that side of his head. So we actually might shave off. I'm going to shave off a little bit on that side. Now start making a little adjustment just based on that, that point right there. But the, we're not seeing that side, that much of that side of the face. Okay, so we've got those high elevational points. Then we've got the tip of the nose. And then we've got the chin where it comes forward. Looks like he's already got like a little half smile there. But I was just trying to illustrate that we're not seeing quite as much of that side of the mouth. There's not quite as much information there. Okay, so now we can start to get a tiny bit more specific because we can see does the edge of the mouth do I have the same amount of space distance from the cheek here to the corner of the mouth? And that looks pretty good for me, although I might drop it down a little bit here on the side to account for those really round. Rounded cheekbones right there. And that also starts to make it feel more childlike just by doing that just by making those cheeks a lot softer. And then I'll do a little bit of that over here, but keeping in mind that I'm not seeing quite as, as much, but I want the same roundness on that side. All right, that's looking pretty good so far. Um, Okay, so now we're going to put in the, the sh general shape for the, the eyes. Although I just realized now would be a good time to do the hairline too, but I feel like I'm teasing y'all with the eyes. Let's do the hairline first. Okay, so right above the little circle for the forehead is we're going to have this big curl shape come right over that circle at the center of the forehead. So I'm just going to draw that circle there. And draw that circle there. Put 
poor Jack. I didn't, I told him that I was drawing him for this class, but I didn't tell him I was going to draw all over his face, make him look like a clown. It took me several years of drawing facial proportions like this to realize that clowns are kind of, they're highlighting, they're almost like highlighting the skeleton under the shape, under the, the face, you know, by highlighting where the, the bones protrude with those, with the makeup shapes that they tend to use. And why I never noticed that until I started drawing circles on my facial proportions. So it's like putting clown makeup on your, your sketch. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this little curl shape in here and that's gonna really inform and tell me if I'm in the right place or not. And if the way I'm drawing the hair is confounding to you, then you can refer back to that class on drawing hair. I actually even used my son's curly hair for one of the, the demos in that class. Okay, and then the hair is coming out farther than the, the head, right? It's on the outside of the head, so it's going to go just a little bit wider than where we drew the top of the head up here. And I am having to imagine this right here. You can maybe just let it trail off since that's missing in the photograph. And then I'm just doing the same thing over here, just noticing I'm really using the hair as a, a map, mapping point so that I can check myself against the hair when we're mapping the, the facial features. And then he's got a very, his hairline kind of dips back right there, but then you got all these little baby hairs coming forward. All right, that's probably good enough for just mapping out the, the hair a little bit um, so that the photograph does cut off the very top of his head, but we're not trying to necessarily fully complete this photograph. So it's okay if it kind of disappears in some places. We're just focusing on mapping and contouring a head tonight. We're, our goal is to map and contour this head. Um, so if your goal is to fully render this, this photograph, then we might have different goals. All right, we got about 20 minutes left. I think we're doing pretty good. All right, now let's get those eyes in there. So we've got a really good guide for ourselves so far now to see like when we put these eyes in, if they're not in the right place, it's gonna be pretty obvious. So we know that this line at the center of the eyes, um, or that this eye, this line goes through the center of the eyes. So we just need to get our eye shape to be around that. And if when we do that, something doesn't look quite right, then we know that we put the eye, the eye line either too high or too low, and then it's not too late right now to scoot it down. So don't fully commit to this eye yet, y'all. Uh, we got to really work general here. So I'm just drawing this little line right here for like the top of his eye shape, and then a little curved line for the bottom of the eye shape, because I just want to put it in there and then put the eyebrow on top of it and see how that looks see if I have enough space on the forehead. I really can't know until I put it in. So let me just sketch it in there and I can already tell, I think I've maybe made it too high on my head and I need to scoot it down. Maybe, hang on. All right, let me draw a little bit more of the shape in there just so I can see. We've got the eyelashes. I'm just doing it really quickly for myself here to see if it's in the right place. And then I'll, I'll break it down a little bit more in a second because I might have to draw it again. And I'm also trying to get it nice and big because last time I didn't quite make it big enough. So actually the more I'm looking at it, I think that is in the right spot because then the nose would be right around here and the top of the lip. 
I gotta have my little clef. I think that's looking pretty good. Maybe I just drew the hair a little too low. That's an easy fix. It feels like there's a little more of the forehead visible here, but it might just be, I might just be seeing that because I made the hair a little too far down. And if I scoot the hair up now, I'm seeing that same distance on the forehead. But look at your drawing and assess how things look at this point, because we definitely don't want to get too attached to anything at this point where we, you know, we get so attached to our drawing that we're unwilling to move that eye. So be honest with yourself if you need to scoot it down or scoot it up. I'm going to go ahead and and think that I, I've got it in the right place. And at this point, we maybe are not capturing likeness just yet. Okay, so let me break down the, the eye shape that I, I drew here. So without going too much into just drawing eyes specifically, we don't necessarily have a perfect almond shape here. We've got, um, it's sort of flat on the top of the eye, his eye crease comes down. Uh, the eye, you're not seeing a whole lot of his upper, uh, his eyelid, his forehead, this kind of crease of skin below his, um, his brow line just goes right on top of his, uh, his eyelashes basically. So there's not a whole lot of space between his eyelashes. I mean, you can see where the lid is but it's kind of covered up by this little piece of skin that hangs down right there. So, and then we've got the shape of the, the eyebrow above that, but yeah, we've got more of a flat line right here. There's not like a huge rounded shape on his, his upper eyelid. Like if we compare, you know, on my eyelid, I've got a lot of space happening there, but it's, there's not a whole lot of space, so. But then we've got a nice big iris visible and we can see the bottom of the iris and then a little bit of a space even below that before the bottom lid happens. We can see a double line on the, the bottom lid and then we got those big eyelashes. He's got a little freckle right there by his eye. And then we'll go ahead and put a little bit of a reflective light shape in there. We're just doing kind of an empty drawing. We're not adding any values just yet. And, you know, that's also easy to erase if I realize in a bit that I'm something is a little bit off, but I just wanted to get it mostly in there. Okay. Um, oh, and then now I can see you know, it might just be that I drew that circle in the wrong place because I did scoot the, the cheeks down a little bit after I drew that circle, but I drew his highest elevational point on his cheek was a little lower like right here. So maybe I just need to scoot down my circles. I'm not going to worry about capturing likeness too much since the goal of the class is mapping and contouring. If we're getting a realistic head to happen here and we're making it look like a child about the same age as my son, I'm going to be happy. And I think you should be too if yours is headed in that direction. If it doesn't look exactly like him, we're not going to worry too much about it. Okay. So now we're going to really use, we're not going to worry about this other eye just yet. Uh, let's start talking about these value shapes so we can start to get some, some nice contours going here because we've definitely done the mapping part so far, but uh, we got to get some good contours going before the end of class. So we're looking at the shapes of the shadows versus the shape of light. And in a lot of the premium classes where I've broken down the uh, different 
facial features so far, I've used inverted light photographs. And I didn't share this in the supply list because honestly, I didn't think about it. But then when I printed it out today, I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of glad I didn't send everyone <laughs> this photo. I don't know, just a little, a little creepy. Um, but anyway, all of the light is uh, dark in the photograph and all of the darks are light. So um, there's nothing that's showing up absolute black. That might have been my printer too. Well, no, there is um, right here in his eye and right there. So that tells us, yeah, pardon me. I'm saying um, there's that that was something to do with my printer. That's actually correct. The only places in this photograph where we have absolute white happening are that reflective light at the center of his eye and there in his eye a little bit and then maybe here at the tip of the nose and here on the lips so see how those are all showing up as black that's where the absolute white is and then everything that's showing up absolute uh white in the, this printout this inverted light is where it's actually super dark or black in the photograph so that would be the center of the eyes the pupils and my printer might have washed out some of the, the lighter lights and made them look absolute white. But, you know, all this dark shadows in his hair, center of the nostrils, um, side of the nose, et cetera, all those whiter areas in the photograph are where it's absolute black. And certainly right here on the side of his face, which is a helpful shadow here to make the, the head come forward is putting this dark shadow. We'll, we'll make sure we get that in um before the end of the class that dark shadow right there is what's going to really help push the, the elevations of the head forward for us um okay so looking at that now i can see all of these big mid-tones so you might even circle these shapes with your pencil in the photograph just outline them very generally and just start to see all of these organic shapes. And those of you who have taken a lot of these classes with me so far know that I do this thing quite a bit where I say to look at these value shapes and ask yourself, what else could that shape be? So this shadow on the side of the nose, um, especially if I turn it upside down, I can see like kind of a, a hook shape like this long skinny rectangle shape and then a hook so that's what i'm going to draw on the side of the nose right here i'm going to draw this long kind of rectangular shape with a hook on the side of it and then i'll adjust okay so there's an elevational shift happening right here that's causing that shadow to happen. What's happening is if we're talking about the, um, the contour lines, what's happening is things are dipping and turning. So there's a curve in happening right here. There's like a little, it's curving in and then back up again. So it curves in and up and then over like that. So that's the, the elevation. And on the kind of vertical axis right here, we've got a curved line that comes down like that and then wraps around inside of that hook shape. And then along the side of the slope, we've got these diagonal lines that just show us that it, it curves down. All right. And I do this in almost every class when I break down drawing anything. I did it even just the other day in the succulent class on drawing the leaves of a succulent. So um, this is definitely nothing new if you want to, you know, and again, going back to that very first class on intro to graphite and drawing forms, I did this with an apple in the very first class in this series. So if I'm losing you, um, you can just refer back to one of those classes. 
All right, so let's look at some other shadowy shapes that we're seeing here. And some important ones that maybe are not super obvious in the inverted light photo, but I see it right here is this highlight shape and then this shadow shape, which actually defines this big mid-tone shape on the forehead. So I want to put that in because there's an important elevational shift happening here on the side of the head. And I maybe put the, the hairline a little too far right there. But we've got this shape, which feels like maybe a flag shape right here that hugs the side of the, the eyebrows. And then this shape right here of a shadow, it's, they're all mid-tones and that's what a lot of folks tend to ignore. We focus on those heavy shadows and those uh, highlights a lot, but these mid-tones are where a lot of the, the contour action is happening. So I just wanna illustrate what the elevational shift is doing right here. So it's really hugging the side of this apple. It's very curved right here. This is not a flat area. And the elevation kind of shifts right here and then starts to curve down around the cheeks. So it's like radiating out almost with the eyelashes, if that makes sense. So I'm really gonna make this this drawing look like zebra child right now, but we want to get all these contours in there. And again, if you're drawing these super light, they're not going to feel, you know, so abrasive, but I'm drawing them really dark so that they will show up on screen. Okay, so the elevation on the cheek, you know, this is the highlight, right? This is where the light is hitting it the most on the cheek, but we've got a shape of a shadow happening there. So, and the shape is more of a triangular shape of the shadow and it kind of curves up and then connects to the eye right here. And we can just do this all over the face, although it will start to get, you know, distracting at a certain point, but if it's helpful to you to do this in like a test drawing, and then don't draw these lines quite as much in your final drawing, then do it that way. But just notice how the elevation is curving. So we've got this shape for the, the cheekbone right here, the shape. It's hard to notice, but there is a shift in the, the value there. And along that shape, we've got a line that curves like this, and then this directional line is going to follow the same as the cheekbone. And you can, you know, you can really see the harder you look and you observe the photograph. And if you're trying to apply these rules to a, another photograph, you know, the more you study a photograph, the more these things start to jump out at you, the more you start to see these elevational shifts and curves. So um, they're hard to notice, but it, and it really comes with years of practice to like see them right away. And I know it's really helpful for me to point them out right now, but um, okay. We've got about five minutes here, but I feel like we've gotten pretty close to where I wanted us to land before the end of the class, except I didn't talk very much about the lips. So let me get those in there a little bit here. So we've got, you know, butter melting on a piece of toast, right? They're very soft um, and we're gonna draw them more based on the, the highlights and the values. So let's look at and also we can see, does the pupil line up with the corner of the mouth? And if it doesn't, then you can scoot things out a little bit, but it's subtle, but the side of his mouth does come out that wide. So then we've got this little, I'm just gonna draw it and then I'll talk about it afterwards. Um, got this shape and it's much easier to just draw these value shapes than to try to draw lips. 
and I had that whole premium class on drawing lips where I talked about this where I'm not necessarily drawing a hard outline around the lips. I'm not at all. I'm drawing the shapes of the shadows that I'm seeing. And the elevation on the lips is doing this. So we've got that, we've got a curve, we've got a little center line at the center of the lips and a little curve of a protrusion at the top lip. We've got a shadow right here that dips and curves. I'm just going to draw all the elevational shifts that I'm seeing here. It's like a little fault line. So it dips down there in the, the little clef under the nose. And anything I don't cover as far as uh, these contours, uh, I'll you know get to it next week. But I just want to get a little bit of detail in here. Then we've got the highlights on the lips like that, those little, just putting those in. And then we've got this big mid-tone shadow falling across the chin. And it definitely curves out in opposite directions right here. So there's a kind of equator line. And on this side, it curves out to the right and on this side it curves out to the left. We got something like that. Okay, um, I think that's a, a good place to land. Um, we didn't get to this other eye, but that's okay. Um, you can definitely jump ahead a little bit if you want or next week I'll just fill in that eye and then we'll continue to uh, map and contour the face. Um, but I think we got pretty close to where we were trying to land before the end of the class. And then uh, we'll start to add more value next week and I'll erase a lot of these lines and uh, really push those values so that we start to see, you know, that subtle shift in light to dark happen and get some tonal shading in there. But our shading is going to be added following those contour lines. Those contour lines are very helpful to know uh, where we're going to add these shadows. Um, so if you have any leftover questions that I didn't get to, um, you can join me on Instagram live here in just a moment at 7.05 p.m. I'll uh, open that up and I'd love to um, to chat with some of you guys and let's see some of your drawings at this point. If you care to share them, you can just hold them up and Chanel can spotlight you so that we can see where you are in this process. I can see all my replica Jack's drawings. <laughs> Give me one second and then I'll start spot okay. spotlighting people. And lots of good ones being held up. Oh, and thank you for all the great. All right, let's see. Lots of great comments saying thank you. Thank you so much. All right, good. Yeah, good start. And I'm definitely feeling the childlike proportions there. So yeah, just get maybe the eyes could even be a little bigger on that one. Okay, let's see. Another one. Thank you guys so much for all the great comments. Ooh, nice. Yes. I love how I'm really feeling the three dimensions to those curves and contours there. Oh, I'm so grateful for you guys too. So many wonderful comments. Look at that. Ooh, you're really capturing some likeness there. Yeah. A little bit. She's shaking her head. I disagree. <laughs> oh, yes. And I see you're starting to put some soft value in where you're adding those contours. Wonderful. Yeah, this is such a helpful way to understand uh, the three dimensions of the head. Really great. Nice, and I like that y'all are drawing so light that it's hard to see all the details. You might want to get those, those eyes to take up more space on, on the head and that one on the right uh, for sure. And that mouth definitely needs to come 
everything needs to shift down on that one on the left, but great start. So yeah, just keep playing with it. Thank you for sharing. Ooh, look at that one. Oh, wow. Yeah. You captured some likeness for sure already too. I love how soft your lines are, keeping it nice and soft and loose. That's a good policy. Okay, well, I don't, oh, one more. I don't wanna to go too far over time. Very nice. Yeah, those contours are looking really good. Okay, well, uh, yeah, keep sketching and practicing and I'll see you all next week for part two, unless you wanna uh, join me on Instagram Live and we can keep the discussion going. Thanks everyone and have a great night.